Hi, I'm Kim Tasso and I guess you're watching today because you're curious about uh, curiosity. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what is curiosity, then we're going to talk about why curiosity is so important to us um, and then we're going to look at uh, some ideas about making you and helping you be more curious. So let's start with what is curiosity. Maybe curiosity makes you think about Alice through the looking glass or Alice in Wonderland uh, where she exclaimed curiouser and curiouser in her strange new world or maybe you think about that saying curiosity killed the cat. I guess that was always a warning to mind your own business but hey newsflash Curiosity means you can have adventures is a curious cat adventure book even for your kids. Um, curiosity is simply the desire to know or learn uh, something. It's interest, uh, inquisitiveness, uh, a spirit of inquiry. Um, some people regard curiosity as the knowledge emotion. Um, there's a difference between the curiosity that is an innate uh, ability in all animals, for example, to find new food sources, and human beings, uh, which is a desire for, for knowledge in its, in its own right. Um, so studies have suggested that there are different types of curiosity. So for example, there's diversive curiosity, and that's where you need to seek stimulation from boredom, and I think we all had some of that during the lockdown. Um, knowledge curiosity, which is just an impulse uh, to learn and know more. Specific curiosity, which is about something very particular that you've looked at and then there's perceptual curiosity which is sort of seeking real world experience so why is curiosity so important well there are many reasons for you um, and the world around us why it's important first of all curiosity supports learning and unlearning um, young kids have an amazing sense of, uh, of curiosity they have to learn so much as they grow up about the world around them and how they interact with that world around them so little kids are constantly asking why 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 it drives parents to distraction sometimes who've never really thought about the answer to questions like why is the sky blue or why do dogs bark instead of talk or why can't I eat chocolate all the time actually that's that's my question um, anyway so um, it really drives uh, learning um, curiosity guards against us making the wrong assumptions we all have in our in our heads a kind of mental model of the world with our core beliefs and core views about you know how we see and interpret what's going on around us um, but within that are a lot of assumptions um, and confirmation bias means that we often seek out information that confirms our view of the world where really we should be looking for um, you know conflicting views and different opinions um, so that we are open to new information and new ideas. Um, Socratic questioning is a disciplined technique of questioning, which is used to examine ideas um, and to be able to determine the validity of those ideas. So questions are really important and curiosity in the pursuit of logic. And that's often a key part of the judicial process where they're seeking to cross-examine uh, witnesses to reveal discrepancies and the truth. Curiosity is often really important for creativity. Many great artists produce their greatest works because they were curious about what happened when they looked at something a different way or they used materials in a way that hadn't been used before and experimented. Um, Curiosity will also uh, help your future employability. Greg Orm, in his great book, The Human Edge, argued there are four distinctly human things that will protect us in the workplace from the onward march of automation, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And alongside creativity and consciousness and collaboration was creativity. So it's vital for our future. A 2015 article by Harvard Business Review reported on a PwC survey of 1300 CEOs across 77 countries and curiosity and open mindedness uh, were leadership traits that were becoming increasingly uh, critical in challenging times. In February 2020, uh, LinkedIn research into 140 top CEOs identified nine critical mindsets that are really important for the future and open and curiosity were among them. Um, it's also interesting that many of the leaders, some of the greatest organisations in the world, Google, Amazon and Microsoft, highlighted the importance of learnability. That's curiosity combined with a thirst for knowledge and the ability to learn and unlearn is a key indicator of career potential. 
Curiosity can also make you a better leader. They say that managers are focused on keeping the status quo going and leaders drive change. So many leaders will constantly challenge the way uh, things are by asking why and what next. Maybe you've met, read this brilliant book uh, by Simon Sinek on, you know, start with why. And if that isn't a plea to be more curious, I don't know what is. Um, many business people will try to predict what happens in the future by looking and developing future scenarios and asking what if questions. They use their curiosity to explore alternative futures and ponder the different responses you might make to those. Um, so business people will also invest a huge amount in research and development programs to seek out new needs and new solutions and innovation. And what is that if not just, you know, a business application of curiosity? Curiosity is just really good for business. Um, in May 18, uh, there was another article in the Harvard Business Review uh, called The Importance of Being Curious. And they said that research shows it leads to higher performing and more adaptable firms. So that's got to be good for business. Of course, we mentioned curiosity drives scientific research, um, uncovers new things, makes discoveries and new breakthroughs. Um, people in the sciences are naturally curious. They want to know why things happen and what happens when they change one particular variable amongst many. Um, they constantly ask what if to and they form a hypothesis of what they think is happening and then seek evidence to prove or disprove that. Our hypothesis and one of my favorite quotes from Albert Einstein was he said I have no special talents I am only passionately curious um, but curiosity is also important for building relationships. The starting point for any relationship is to build some empathy, to step into the shoes of the other person and see the world through their eyes. And we do that by asking questions. Um, we ask questions and listen carefully to find areas of similarity and shared interests. But by asking questions, we're also showing care, interest and respect to that person. And we try and balance the information we obtain from them with what we share about ourselves and curiosity and questions are a fundamental part of persuasion uh, coaching and even sales processes most frameworks for selling are based on a, a structured framework and order in which we ask different types of questions and listen very carefully to the responses so there are things like funneling questions open and closed questions direct and indirect questions uh, combined questions incisive questions calibrated questions I often reframe selling uh, and the sales process as kind of be more detective and you know detectives are all always curious aren't they so how can you be more curious so I wanted to give you some tools like Curious George here with his hammer another great book for, for kids of Curious George encouraging people to be curious so the first thing would be to be more open um, some psychologists think that people are kind of one of two mindsets the first is a kind of a fixed mindset where you think you know what intelligence and attributes you have are fixed and so they don't really make an effort the others are people who have a growth mindset and uh, they're much more open and think that they can develop and learn which of course they can because our brains are kind of neuroplastic um, so the idea that you know we can learn and we can grow and we can uh, um, you know, believe we can always do better. Um, in psychometrics, we know that uh, some people and their personalities are more open to new experiences and ideas. This construct we look at there is actually called openness. Um, but we can all be more curious just by asking more questions. We can also listen without judgment. There's a, a statistic that says something like only 40% of what we hear we actually absorb. Um, and often when people are talking, if we hear something we don't understand, we kind of switch off. Um, so we have to work really hard hard uh, you know if that happens finding out what's you know what we don't understand and learning so we can continue uh, to listen without judgment and learn and then we can make up our own informed minds about things we can also admit when we don't know there's no harming in saying I don't understand that or could you explain that for me further or how do I find out about that more and again having that curiosity to learn about things that are outside your immediate scope are, is really valuable and of course, along with that, you have to accept that you might be wrong. Um, cognitive dissonance is when we try to hold two pieces of conflicting information in our brains and it's very uncomfortable. And letting go of deeply held beliefs and values is really hard. So that we have to accept that on occasions we might be wrong and we have to change, uh, change our minds.
of course asking more questions um, but be careful because some questions are kind of governed by social rituals so we often say to people how are you and the standard response is I'm fine thanks and you and we go through that without actually really answering the question um, so you know think about asking different types of questions to get people to think and give you a different sort of response rather than the standard uh, answer. Roger Kipling famously said I keep six honest serving men they taught me all I knew their names are what and why and when and how and where and who so the power of asking questions throughout my long career um, I often use the phrase which is this may be a dumb question but and I have to say in over 30 years only once has someone and of course it was a lawyer turned around and said yes Kim that was a dumb question very often it will generate a discussion that will deepen my understanding of a situation sometimes it will prompt others to examine their assumptions and make them think about why we do things a particular way and whether we can change it and explore alternatives often people will say that's a really good question which means our curiosity has prompted their curiosity and we examine assumptions and establish practice and start new strands of thought and practice. And the final tip here is to kind of become a perpetual student, become a lifelong learner. Uh, consider how much time you spend each week learning about new things. Read books outside your area of expertise and comfort zone. Uh, make a habit of watching uh, TED uh, lectures. Watch documentaries on subjects you're unfamiliar with. Read magazines and newspapers that you wouldn't normally read. Sign up for a new course. There's so much free online learning. It's fantastic. And the more you learn, the more you realise, the less you know. Um, and that drives further curiosity. So I hope you found those thoughts interesting about curiosity and you are fired up to go and find out more about being curious. So thank you very much for watching and listening.